Clue Mobile Inc. Bull Signals predicts mobile gaming stock could hit double digits. Some of you may not know about uh, Clue Mobile Inc. Clue Mobile Inc. obviously is the uh, maker of third party licensed brands, including. Kylie and Kendall and Kim Kardashian Hollywood the company works directly with other application developers to include advertising uh, for their applications in its games and the developers pay them based on either the number of impressions its games or the number of users downloading the developers application so it publishes and markets a portfolio of mobile games. The company develops and publishes a portfolio of mobile games designed to appeal to a cross-section of users of smartphones and tablets and devices. Its portfolio of mobile games is spread across various uh, genres, including fashion and celebrity, food, sports, action, social networking, and home. Uh, its games include uh, Contract Killer, Cooking Dash, Covert Fashion, Deer Hunter, Fash Design Home, Quiz Up, Racing, Racing Rivals, and Tap Sports Baseball, as well as games based on third party license brands. We've already talked about, about that. Um, so, Glue Mobile came to our attention based on this piece written on, uh, here on uh, Schaefer Investment Research. But of course, you may have also heard that um, we provided, we have this platform, EQ4, um, Equity for Keeps. The link is EQ4K. You know, we help you be uh, make very smart and clever use of your money. This platform provides a means where you can associate your money, especially the, the disposable ones, the ones you pay your rent and your mortgages with. You know, when you sign up, you simply come over here uh, on this uh, phone's recall tab and then you will uh, indicate to us who benefits from your rent payments, your mortgage payments and uh, we'll go ahead and negotiate with them to invest that money you have paid in the equity we gave you upon signing up. So um, going back to what uh, we were talking about earlier on and they have it that um, the shares of game developer Glue Mobile Inc. was uh, flat on Friday, the uh, 31st of uh, July 2020, despite broad market volatility. Last seen up trading at $9.38, with short term pressure from its 20 day moving average, keeping a tight lead on the equity. Traders might not want to look down on Glue yet, however, as the security has just pulled back to a historic, historically bullish trend line that could help it topple its short term uh, sitting. Specifically, Glue is within one standard deviation of the 80 day moving average after several months trading above uh, the trend line. According to the data from uh, Schaefer's senior quantitative analyst, five similar signals have occurred during the past three years. The stock enjoyed positive returns one month after each signal averaging an, a 9.4 percent gain a similar move from this current patch would put uh, glue mobile stock just above uh, ten dollars level a territory has that has not been uh, crossed for the past several weeks a short-term squeeze could fuel uh, additional gains short uh, interest increased by 15 percent in the last uh, two most recent reporting periods yet the 11.11.11 million shares sold short still accounts for a healthy 7.9 percent of glues total available flows that sentiment is reflected in the option speed where appetite for calls is, is extremely high glue spots a 50-day uh, call put volume of 47.6 at International Securities Exchange and the other ones. Okay, so we will return here on the summary page and uh, provided by uh, Charles Schwab. And we can see 
the put call ratio uh, is zero. Um, well, probably there isn't any record on that in that case. But for 30 dates, uh, 0 0.1, indicating that uh, the the calls are so min the puts are so minimal relative to the calls, you know. And it has a market cap of 1.6 billion. Short interest uh, is 6.7 percent here, but uh, here on uh, uh, short squeeze it is seen uh, it is 7.8. It will take uh, almost 30 days to cover, and then uh, we're back here again. We can see it's not exactly a very hot stock. Um, of late, it has underperformed the S and P. Uh, all all the uh, indexes uh, and their der der derivatives uh, or the related uh, derivatives of the S and P five hundred. But over in the long run, it has uh, performed better than all of them. You know, and uh, so we have a few. Uh, ETFs holding it, so it's not um, uh, uh, um, it's not uh, as poor as we indicated earlier on. It's not as if we said it wasn't a hot stock, but we can see we they have uh, Invesco. You know, the 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 two of their ETFs uh, are involved in their stock. If as a matter of fact, three and SPDR. So it's not um, by no means by no means not a not a pushover. You know, it is of great interest. And um, the fact that um, these guys are holding them, it could be uh, a component of uh, one of the indexes. Maybe not the uh, not the S and P, but probably uh, any of the uh, minor ones that were not that popular. Um, so here on the charts, we can uh, get closer and see what's going on here. Um, since um around march we can see this sort of uh, pattern going on here it's sometimes it can it can indicate uh, um it can but it doesn't look so much like it like short squeezes you know um but what is uh certain is that uh, from uh sometime in uh from the, uh, the the 8th of uh, May, it has continued to trade sideways. So that price is 10.27, so it's been trading between 10.27 and 9.44 for um, the best part of almost three months or there about. about. So uh, sometimes um, one may be tempted to see, uh, to conclude that some of this uh, very sharp, um, traces we see on its price curve are uh, uh, the result of uh, short squeezes, but you know what is certain it has is that you know it has been trading sideways, and, and there isn't um, any um, uh, the slightest uh, indication of a uh, of an upward momentum um, was or rather was came to an end by the 16th of uh, July. You know this trend line here definitely indica indicates the momentum, and uh, and indeed it was yes, and that was uh, mostly the uh, twenty day moving average that uh, indicated that the ten day moving average, which is this this uh, curve here, did not indicate that as, as such, and uh, the price uh, line. The timeline indicator did indicate that, but um, it's now um, indicating that um, the momentum has uh, run its course. But the the, uh, the ten day this one and the twenty day are also indicating uh, that uh, what we have what we're looking at right now is a sideways movement. Uh, but these are they, this those those curves are just um, um, they're not forward looking or such, you know. So. And in that piece we read, we uh, could also read that um, it has pulled back. It pulled back from uh, that peak of 1040, 10, 1040, let's see what that price is. It 
it's 1044 1044 or 1047 it's uh, pulled back from that and uh, fell to 915 and uh, all in all you can see it has pulled back from 1047 and this uh, uh, has uh, toppled that uh, 20 day uh, simple moving average trend line which is uh, an pretty indicator as well and is also approaching try to approach um, um, uh, the 10 day as at uh, Thursday the uh, 30th of July but uh, since uh, sort of uh, cooled down a bit didn't that doesn't seem like uh, very much on that uh, between Thursday and the and, fr and Friday the 31st so yes you know by the by the very nature of this uh, and also the, the, we can say one can say that um, it has some um, the the curve itself is you know, is indicating some sort of momentum having breached uh, uh, this um, um, it has breached yes what it has breached is the, uh, the, the 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 time series forecast that one he has breached it and also has breached the um, the uh, bro bro yes, broken yeah, breached the 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 lead provided by um, the time series forecast and then the 20 day simple moving average and um, it's now probably uh, might make its way towards uh, the 10 day so if um, going by the fact that he has been trading sideways for a long time you know um, uh, as I said 17 it was trading below the all of them trading all the above all the short term trend lines and uh, okay and so it's the last time it did that it breached all of them it it surpassed all of them and then uh, here again it uh, traded below and it's now trying to surpass all of them so all in all you can um, go back uh, you can rely on the history of uh, what has happened to it in the very short term and probably uh, you know decide if it is indeed a bullish uh, it's currently spotting uh, bullish uh, tendencies at the moment so but um, the MACD and the signal line actually indicate a very very uh, tepid um, outcomes for its momentum you can see it uh, the MACD crossed over the signal line and uh, declined into uh, negative territory over there and then um, even the relative strength index is trading on the lower side of uh, of uh, of the whole spectrum spectrum over there so um, yeah you know um, but on the other hand, see, we can see that um, even though the MACD has uh, continued, has uh, indicated um, neg negative uh, uh, tendencies, it might indeed uh, be uh, trying to look up in, 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 uh, in no due time. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video and sign up on our platform as we indicated earlier on. Um, EQ4K, thank you very much again.